Hey everyone, Tyler Edwards here. Today I'm going to be talking about RGB lighting and why I think it's such a powerful tool for filmmaking and photography. Now, for the sake of this video, when I mention RGB lighting, I'm referring to two of kind of the leading technologies when it comes to RGB lighting for filmmaking, and that's RGBWW and RGBACL. Now, they both have their benefits and their pros and cons over each other. I'm not going to get into all that in this video. Just know that if you see, if you're shopping for RGB lights, uh, look out for either RGBACL or RGBWW because those are kind of the most accurate uh, lighting fixtures out there when it comes to RGB lighting for filmmaking. Okay, well with that said, let's go ahead and hop into some of the benefits of RGB fixtures and, and why they're such powerful tools. And the first thing is, well, you get an extended CCT range. Now, some fixtures like daylight balance sources or just tungsten sources, like a, a source four or something like that, um, the only way to really change that color temperature is to use gels. So like, for example, right here, I've got a number of different gels. I've got uh, some, some CTS, which I really love for uh, warming up daylight balance fixtures. So I've got some half and full uh, rolls here, which is nice. And then I've got uh, some like these little uh, gel, this little gel pack from, I think it's a Lee filters. Yeah, and I've got like CTO, um, CTBs, uh, purples and greens and reds and all that kind of stuff so a bunch of different uh, little gels and that's the really the only way to change the color of these fixtures that are only set to either daylight or tungsten but wait a minute i know i know what you're thinking you can you can get bicolor lights can't you yeah absolutely you can get bicolor lights and and typically those will kind of on average be somewhere between 2500 or 2700 kelvin which is kind of warmer all the way up to like 6,500 to 7,500 Kelvin, somewhere in that range, it just kind of depends. But the cool thing about RGB lighting is you can actually expand that even more, all the way from like 1,500 Kelvin to like 20,000 Kelvin. So you have so many more options with regards to like getting whatever CCT uh, that you want and those extra LED chips in there kind of help you get to those, uh, those lower end and higher end uh, CCT ranges just to kind of give you way more uh, creative choices on set. Now that expanded CCT range is obviously a huge benefit of RGB lights, but it doesn't stop there. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about is be able to kind of dial in whatever gel that you like. And, and what I mean by that is like, uh, for example, right here, I've got like a CTO, it's got full CTO. And right here I have full CTS and then a half CTS. Well, these both warm up a daylight balance fixture, but they have different characteristics and some DPs or uh, whatever the case may be might prefer one over the other. A lot of times I prefer to use CTS, especially if I'm trying to kind of mimic afternoon sun. I prefer CTS over CTO. With these RGB lights, you can kind of just go into the app or maybe on, on the fixture itself, you just go into the menu system and choose uh, half CTS or quarter CTS or whatever the case may be. And at that point, you don't have to um, gel, like run up and put a gel on your light anymore. You can do that all with an app, which is really cool. So huge benefit there, uh, being able to kind of dial in whatever gels that you like. Some DPs are, are quite particular because they've used certain gels over the career and they kind of know what to expect from their gels. So being able to match those with an RGB fixture is so huge and such a time saver on set. Obviously with RGB lighting, uh, you can pretty much get any color that you want and just kind of change that with, again, within the app or with, you know, on the fixture or whatever the case may be, depending on the fixture. And you have so many different variations of the color, different saturation values and all that kind of stuff. So you can really dial in whatever color you want. And this is when you can start to get really creative on set with adding color contrast or uh, just different splashes of light. You think of like music videos or, or anything like that or matching neon signs, all that kind of stuff you can do just within the light itself and not have to, you know, rig up different gels and stuff to get different effects. Now, being able to expand that CCT range and uh, changing uh, all to whatever color that you want or, or even you know matching to whatever gel, dialing in whatever gel that you like on your RGB fixtures is super beneficial. But I think the biggest selling point to RGB lights is the ability to adjust the green and magenta shift correction. Now, if you don't know what that is, basically green magenta shift correction basically introduces a little bit of magenta or a little bit of green into your fixture, depending on what you're trying to balance to. So in the past, if you, you know, if you had a, a, a light that was 
really green and you needed to correct that and, and bring it back down to be you know a little bit more neutral, you'd have to use something like this. This is a uh, 1 8 minus green gel, and uh, this is what you'd have to put in front of your fixtures to kind of uh, tame that down so that the light sources were balanced. Or think of like uh, an office building where you have a bunch of fluorescent bulbs uh, in the ceiling. A lot, of a lot of times those have a pretty nasty green shift to them, and you either go and gel every one of those lights, or you have to to gel your key light to kind of balance those out. But also, it's not just uh, those fluorescent bulbs. There's a lot of fixtures out there that have a pretty nasty green shift to them. In particular, I found with like bicolor lights seem to have a pretty nasty green shift to them. So you either have to use a you know a minus green correction gel, or if you have an RGB light, you just dial in to whatever plus green or minus green, depending on what the fixture is. So for example, I was filming an interview and uh, our key light was an Aperture Nova, which is an RGB WW fixture. And the key light, I can't remember what it was, but it was a, it was a, one of those like flexible LED mats, but it was only bi-color. And that bi-color light had a really nasty green shift to it because we had the Aperture Nova as the key light, just walked over, added to, I think it was 0.5 correction. So pretty heavy shift. And then it looked really natural and super balanced. And then you just go into your camera settings and adjust your magenta or green settings depending on uh, what you added in on your light, just to kind of make it look a little bit more balanced. Now we live in a really exciting time with regards to the, the, the variety of fixtures that we have available to us uh, with this RGB technology. Now, with, like with soft light fixtures, you have, you know, your LED panels, you have those like flexible LED lights, you get like all these little practical bulbs uh, and, you know, your, your, your tube lights as well. I mean, those are really popular to use in filmmaking as well. So you have all these different types of fixtures, these, these soft light fixtures that, that are available to you to use. But now recently, a lot of companies have started introducing these point source lights with the same LED technology. And I think that's where things get really exciting. and. I think that is really like the start of the shift towards LED lighting technology. And I think that's going to be the way of the future because of how versatile point source lights are. And on top of that, the versatility of RGB technology. Now you can do things like have that extended CCT range, but be able to cut that light and have really hard, hard light shadows. Maybe, maybe you're putting an accent on a back wall or putting a projection mount on it with a with the Venetian blind effect or something like that, you can start tuning that to, to however you want. And, you know, if you want to make it look like a sci-fi movie and there's a purple sun or purple moon out there, well, now you can just mimic that with a, a point source light and get hard shadows and all that kind of stuff. You kind of see where I'm going. There's so many possibilities with hard light sources that you can get over soft light sources because with soft light sources, you kind of start out with a soft light source and for the most part, you can't really make those a hard light source and get the same quality of light that you can with a point source light. So it's really exciting to see that RGB technology find its way into a point source light. But that's not to say that like a, a daylight balance source is a thing of the past because uh, right now, I mean, I'm sure this will be different in five or 10 years, but daylight balance sources are typically just gonna have more output than the RGB counterpart, just because of the, the physics of packing in the same color emitter on a chip on board, as opposed to having to share that real estate with different color uh, LED chips. So you're just gonna get more output. So if um, more output is something that you need, then the RGB fixture may not necessarily be what you're going after. But a lot of these RGB fixtures are kind of getting in that territory where it's bright enough for most key light situations. And um, you can use those daylight balance sources to like really start pumping in light for volumetric lighting, whatever the case may be. But with that said, I do still think that RGB lighting is the way of the future and um, these gels are kind of a thing of the past. 
Now, one thing I do want to touch on is the cost because with newer technology, it's typically going to be higher cost than the daylight or bicolor variants. So if the cost scares you, they are more expensive. The cost scares you, just consider renting for your next project and, and your next productions until you have the cash to, to invest in these RGB lights. Well, I know I packed a lot of information on, on, on this topic of RGB lighting, but I do think it is the way of the future. And uh, if, if you can be on top of technology, that just makes you even that much more valuable on set and uh, much more attractive to hire for production. So uh, it's always nice to uh, kind of know, be in the know of the cutting edge of technology uh, for, for filmmaking or photography or, or um, honestly, whatever you do. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found something useful and I'll catch you next time. Peace.